Stories are uniquely effective in helping leaders get ideas across in a way that will move people to action. Authors of medical studies are often invited to speak in their own countries. When you humanize the data, there's three ways that it helps an audience better understand what those results are. Concreteness helps us understand faster, better, and longer. What would change your mind to the data? What would open your mind to the data? Clarity, concreteness, and change. By knowing these three practical and inspiring story types, you'll be able to improve your ability to communicate science to change behavior. The three C's, how to clearly communicate for medical professionals. In this video, I want to show you three ways to effectively refine your communication skills to make sure your audience is receiving the message the way it's intended to make sure your communication is impactful. Hi, I'm Jamie Mason Cohen, and I am a communication trainer for medical professionals and the pharma industry in 21 countries where I've helped teams in medical and scientific affairs, senior medical directors, physicians, clinicians, and pharmaceutical sales reps communicate and present scientific data to KOLs, to colleagues at symposiums and conferences, and to help global pharma teams across cultures communicate more effectively, more efficiently, and with clarity. Now, the problems that I solve are miscommunication, cultural and linguistic differences, because the global nature of pharmaceutical companies means that people are from a diverse group of cultural backgrounds worldwide on hybrid teams. Misunderstandings arise from cultural differences of language barriers, which can impede effective communication. Another area I help solve when it comes to problems are how to balance analytical, data-driven messages with customized storytelling so that you can truly connect with the audience through classic storytelling techniques, case studies that move people to action, and appropriate metaphors that help people easily understand what you want them to remember. Now, another area that I hear often that I can directly help you with efficiently and in a way that makes you feel empowered is dry presentations. Authors of medical studies are often invited to speak in their own countries, and they want to make sure they're truly connecting with their audiences. So we will look at how to avoid the data dump so that your audience remembers the key messages that you want them to act on. I'll show you this and more through an overview of the three C framework. The three C's are clarity, concreteness, and change. So if you work for a pharmaceutical company or are a medical professional, this brief actionable training might be for you. As we move through this, I want you to remember that it's not just the information that you share. It's not just about communicating the science. It's about changing behavior through storytelling. So storytelling is about having conversations. It's not just about data declarations. We want to find ways that are innovative to express data when you are in a role as a professional communicator of scientific data. So here's a quick example. Imagine the Earth's 7.7 .7 billion people as if it were shrunk to a village of 100. Well, 29 of those people would be overweight. Well, that's an example of an analogy, of a metaphor that really makes it visible. It helps people visualize a big problem into something that is clear. As we move on, I want you to really understand the importance of this skill set. The World Economic Forum's top skills for the next seven or eight years are problem solving, 
creativity and active learning. Those are three of the top 10. What you notice is that creativity continues to rise and effective storytelling can help your team communicate to each other and in the various ways that we mentioned so that you can help those who you serve better understand what the data means. So the outcomes today are about the clarity, the concrete or the visual nature, the tangible nature that helps people understand the call to action, and the change that you want to help people understand is in their power through connecting story with data. So by knowing these three practical and inspiring story types, you'll be able to improve your ability to communicate science, to change behavior, to be more impactful in your communication, and to celebrate as a team what you do and who you are, which directly helps with team culture. Let's look at why storytelling matters within pharma and medical community. You see, there's three main reasons. Number one, stories are uniquely effective in helping leaders get ideas across in a way that will move people to action. Two, decision-making. Facts and data appeal to the rational part of the brain. And that's important. That's paramount. That's a priority. But if you also don't speak to the heart, then people will not remember and they will not feel compelled to emotionally move to action. Three, there's demographic proof that stories work across all demographics, young, old, men, women. I haven't seen a demographic that doesn't respond to the effects of an effective story that's directly connected to the data that you are trying to impart and make an impact on your audience. So stories are memorable, and studies have shown that facts alone do not really connect to people. So here is how we are going to jump in, starting with the clarity story. So the clarity story has a few elements to it. There's a time, there's a place, there's a main character, there's a villain, there's an obstacle, there's a way to overcome that obstacle, there's a resolution, and then finally, that story connects to the data. So the time and place could be when you were helping a patient overcome an illness. Where was the time? It was 1999. It was the place somewhere in the United States. The main character is the patient. The villain could be the disease. It could be their lack of access to medicine. You show how your pharmaceutical company overcame that challenge with this particular medicine through the trial results. And by overcoming that obstacle, the resolution was the specific results that helped that patient. And you then share the key data that helped that patient. And that's much more effective than just sharing the data and going into the weeds of all of that particular information. Next is the concrete story. And this is all about humanizing the data. When you humanize the data, there's three ways that it helps an audience better understand what those results are and its impact, and its purpose. The first is relatability. The second is familiarity. And the third is concreteness. So if we started off with a human relatable skill in how to humanize that data, the reason that it matters to humanize data is because we lose information when we don't translate the numbers into a human experience. So if the world's water were put into a jug, humans would only be able to drink less than 20 drops of it. So that's 0.25% of water is actually drinkable. 2.5% of the world's water is unsalty. 99% is trapped in glaciers and snowfalls. So by presenting 
an idea into a human level. It helps audiences better understand. It's more relatable. It's more engaging. And people lean in and they remember it much more clear when it's concrete. Here's another example. Apollo 8. In order to enter the atmosphere, the crew of Apollo 8 had to aim for a window of entry of just over two degrees wide. So if you placed a baseball and a basketball 23 feet apart, about the distance of the three-point line from the basket, that's about the same distance, the same window that the astronauts had to land. And literally, it's like the three-point line. They had the distance of the three-point line in basketball to land. Once again, what that's doing is, instead of keeping it at a number or a ratio that people might have trouble understanding quickly, it's giving them some type of relatable human dimension, even from a different area for them to put into context. When we turn the abstract into the concrete, that could simply be saying one centimeter tumor equals a pea, two centimeter tumor equals a peanut, and a three centimeter tumor equals a grape. And what that does is it turns the abstract numbers to the domain of the senses. Concreteness helps us understand faster, better, and longer. Another example of turning the abstract into the concrete when it comes to medical data and connecting it to storytelling, bricks in a building, drops in a bathtub, words in a book, steps in a journey. The example on screen is a single M&M has four calories. In order to burn off the calories in a single M&M, you'd have to walk two flights of stairs, much more impactful than just the data. Another example, a hummingbird weighs three grams. It consumes between three and seven calories a day. Its metabolism is nearly 50 times faster than humans. A hummingbird's metabolism is so fast that if it were the size of an average adult human, it would need to consume slightly more than a Coke every waking minute. That is 67, 67 Cokes an hour, 16 hours a day. Now get your head around that. Is that more engaging than simply providing the facts? Yes, it is. And concreteness can also add poignancy. It can move people. It can be touching. So when you express stats in terms of people, for example, inhabitants of a community that you're in, the numbers really sink in. It's not a model of one particular problem. It helps people rethink their ideas of what kinds of issues exist in the world. And this goes back to our initial example of 100 villagers. 29 of those villagers would be overweight if we put the world of 7.7 .7 billion in context to 100 villagers. So how would you translate a number to a concrete example? So I want you to look at the screen right now. Look at this example. How many ways can you make sense of 1%? Now think of it. Well, if you were thinking, oh, well, that's easy. One penny out of a dollar, you'd be correct. Or one year in a century. That's another example of 1%. So in your next presentation, think about how you can take a scientific data point and turn it into a level that anybody could understand in a simple, accessible way. And keep it simple. You don't have to overcomplicate this. Storytelling is one of the best change agents physicians or clinicians have at their disposal, especially in terms of educating the public. So you can learn a lot from professional negotiators, according to organizational psychologist Adam Grant, when it comes to how to get people to change their minds. And a few of these examples include fewer arguments have the ability to persuade people, not more. So one line of argument feels more like a conversation. Two lines of argument feel more like people are trying to push you to persuade you. 
So you lose ground not because of the strength of your most compelling point, but because of the weakness of your most compelling one. The second thing when it comes to changing people ethically and to persuade them organically is defend attack spirals don't work. Instead, it's kind of like a dance. Express curiosity. Don't just tell people, ask them questions. Say things like, so you don't see any merit in this point at all? That's a way that if you're in pharmaceutical sales, it might help you better understand those who you want to persuade, the physicians. You want to bring a scientific level of humility and curiosity to the conversations that you have. Ask questions. Don't make declarative statements. Ask a physician, what would change your mind to the data? What would open your mind to the data? Acknowledge that they have some valid points. And that's a way when you want to change someone's mind within pharma that you can start with. It's not all about telling them. It's about asking the right kind of questions with the right tone and the right curiosity level. So you don't see any merit in this proposal at all. What would open your mind to the data are the two types of questions that help people change their minds within pharma. So people you are speaking to ask themselves, should I make this change? Would it fail? Why should I make this change? So you're telling the story about whomever stands to benefit from the change. Make sure you're clear on that point. So who benefits most from the change you represent and deliver? What problems or frustrations do you experience? What are the tangible ways you'll know the change is working? You want them to have an important, urgent reason for buying into what you are letting them know you believe, based on the data, is essential for them to take on or for them to adopt. The story about human impact of change is really about the benefit to the clients who have to go through the change or how the community will feel compelled beyond the numbers and the data to make that behavioral change. So one thing I can leave you with now is imagine a story about the benefit to one client who will go through the change that you're proposing. You want to empathize. You want to think about the data in terms of a human being. And that story, imagining the benefit to one client, to one patient, is essential for helping them better understand why they should adapt your medicine or follow the scientific data that you are letting them know is essential. And if we go back to the beginning, it starts with, a time, a place, a main character, a villain, an obstacle, overcoming that obstacle, a resolution, and connecting that story of change to humanize the data that you are presenting. With a structure, the beginning. The beginning could be the time and the place. The middle is the obstacle or the problem that they're solving. And then the end is the takeaway, which is the numbers, the data, and the lessons that they will gain from adapting what you're offering them. I want you just to imagine where your mission takes you from here in your role as a leader within pharma. This is about writing the next chapter of your story. You might be a physician, you might be a senior medical director, you might be a leader in pharmaceutical sales, you might be overseeing a team of a hundred people globally, but you're more than that. You're the kind of person who got into your particular role to help others, to care for people. And that level of passion and contribution to the world needs to come through in how you communicate. I want you to walk away from here with a few tools to further touch the future of your industry and the lives of people who this medicine, who these discoveries and innovation touch every day. To find out more 
about how we can help each other. There's no obligations. There's no strings attached. I've worked in pharma for some of the leading companies in the world to help them in these areas. And I find it's an honor to do so because I know how your work really helps people globally. So my information is on the screen and there's also going to be a link below so we can discuss only if you want how I can help you solve some of the communication pain points that we discussed in your pharmaceutical company, on your global team, in R&D, or brainstorm ideas for your next event. I'm Jamie Mason Cohen, and I really am excited to speak with you about how to communicate more effectively.